What's going on, guys? Sensible Prepper Live Prepper School Volume 3473. I <laughs> uh, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we're going to be talking today about some basics, but we're going to expand on it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Some yeah. cool stuff on the table today. Yeah, we do have some cool stuff. Uh, you know, it's a little similar to EDC, but we're going to step it up. Uh, and we're going to talk about some of the reasons why. Maybe we'll give you some options uh, down in the comments or, of course, in the chat when you're if you're here on live, you know, put those in there. Because um, one thing that's easy to do, though, it's just like with a bug out bag is you just continue to add, add, add. So we just took the top 10 things. There's definitely other things that we could add to this, but we just wanted to give you just some some basic things because you can only carry so much That's weight. Right. We, keeping it minimalistic without becoming an EDC hoarder. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's a real thing. With it, all your cargo it, pockets it full and everything. Our man shorts, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And your satchel. <laughs> uh, but we really appreciate Robbie Wheaton for being here from Wheaton Arms. Uh, so they do a great job on Glock aftermarket parts. They also are the supplier for the upgrades for the dagger. The, the Palmetto State Armory Dagger. Yes, sir. It says a lot. And his flat face trigger is the best on the market. Even better than the Glock Performance Trigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that's a nice trigger, but it's definitely a huge upgrade. Um, but also, Robbie Wheaton's YouTube channel. Check it out. It's been a gunsmith for over 20 years. And uh, we really appreciate Robbie for being here. It's a great good, to be here. Good to have it's you here. It's great to be here. Uh, and then also, Sarah Mack is monitoring comments and questions uh, if you have some questions, you can list them at any time. We're going to take a break and we'll go into some questions. We take a couple of different breaks and give you guys a chance to, you know, ask. And it doesn't necessarily have to be about exactly what we're talking about. Um, OK, so one of the big things. Well, before we get into that, and it reminded me because I just kind of caught my glimpse. Exotac, <laughs> we really appreciate them for sponsoring today's episode. Exotac, these are fire starters that are made right down in Winder, Georgia. Uh, they are ex they are the best. They are the best fire starters on the market, and they do all kind of different fire tools. Uh, one thing I love about the fire rod is that it has a little compartment at the top where you can put one of your tender tabs. And tender is extremely important. And we'll get into a little bit of that in a few minutes. But Exotac, 20% off using Such20 with the link down below in the description. All right. We got our um, got that covered. All right. So there are 10 items that we're going to go through and these are items. It doesn't necessarily mean it's on your body. Right. Right. These are, these are just everyday carry items, whether it's going to be, you know, a small backpack, a pack, things you keep in your car, but it's just items that you should have on you or with you or near you at all times. Right. Now there are things like trauma kit. We're not going to get into that. Yep. There are things like, uh, uh, you know, your self-defense, Conceal carry, mm -hmm. you know, th this is going to be strictly just more or, or less utilitarian. Right. Um, and so first thing is, and, and one of the biggest to me is mm -hmm. a good knife. And, you know, you should carry a knife in your pocket. Uh, a lot of people, though, it's funny. Most people do not. Yeah. Uh, and really in the EDC world and in the prepper world and in the, the gun world, you know, a lot of times we do carry really nice knives. Uh, this is a, a um, Microtech, um, and this is just an automatic, which you got to check your laws as well. Yep. Some states they're legal, some states they aren't. But you know the thing with a with a really good knife is, you know, knives for me are like underwear. I change them every day. I carry a lot of different <laughs> knives, and uh, but it's also something that's very personal. You know, you the type of grip the knife has, how big your hands are, the size of your hands, what fits you, what fits you well. I mean, what fits me may not work for Don. You know, there, there's right. just so many different knives out there. I've got big hands. So, you know, I really like a knife that has a bigger grip, a larger grip that fits me well. If you cut yourself, I'm going to laugh at you. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, <laughs> I'm about to cut myself. <laughs> but yeah, a knife is a very personal item and something that you should, you should try a bunch of them before you buy one and make sure that it fits you and fits you well, especially for a folder for an EDC knife. But, you know, a lot of people carry fixed blade knives. They do. Especially yep. smaller ones. They're very easy to deploy. You don't have to make any kind of movement to mm -hmm. get them out besides just drawing them out. Well, and there's lots of great holsters out there or sheaths out there for knives now that allow you to carry it in a more concealed position. You know, smaller your back in different positions instead of just having a big knife hanging off your belt down to your knee. Right. 
And two, you know, putting them in a good place. And, yep. and again, it does dictate where you are to what you can carry. Mm -hmm. Now, like for us here in South Carolina, the gun law, I mean, the gun laws, the, the knife laws are very lax. They are. Uh, I mean, it's like you can pretty much carry anything up to like a 12 inch Bowie knife. And uh, but if you go into the cities, mm -hmm. like in the town where we live in Greenville, South Carolina, downtown, the blade can't be over like I think it's three or three and a half inches. Yeah. Yep. There, there's a certain limit. Now, are they going to be checking that? No. But if you ever get yourself in a situation, they could. Uh, and two, you know, knives, you can't have your utility knife, but you might need something that you can really do some really serious tasks with. And this right. would probably go in your car. Sure. Go more, in bag. more of a camp knife, more of a bushcraft knife, not necessarily something you're going to carry every day, but a tool that you could have with you that you may need in an emergency situation. Right, right. And two, you know, I mean, there's hunting knives, there's skinners, there's all kind of different knives. And again, like Robbie said, it's really up to the personal choice. Right. And there, there's so many different blade shapes. You know, I'm, we were talking about it before the show. Both of us are big fans of drop point skinners, uh, whether it's a, a fixed blade or a folder. The nice belly on the knife is really good for cutting. It's very good for trimming. And they're, they're just, the blade is just a really good angle that works well for me. It works well for you as well. Well, and sometimes you're just cutting paracord. That's right. Sometimes you're just opening a box, you mm -hmm. know, and that's probably where we use our knives the most is yeah. opening boxes. But it really is. And that's where the drop point skinner, not only is it a, a very sharp blade, but it gives you a large surface area for when you're cutting things. If you're, if you're cutting open a box, you're not using just the tip of the blade, which on most knives is probably the most difficult place on a knife to sharpen. Right. To get right. The, the tip and the edge of the blade right there on the tip, get a really fine edge on that. Where a drop point skinner, you use more of the belly of the blade. So it makes it much easier to sharpen the belly of the blade. And then you're not using the tip very often other than for like if you're skinning, a lot of times you'll use the tip of the blade for detail work. But most of the time you're using the belly, which is an easy part of the blade to sharpen. Right. And, you know, guys, one thing that happens to a lot of us is we just like the way it looks. That's right. You know, we just cool factor uh, is a real thing. Yeah. But sometimes there are, there are a lot of different purposes for knife designs, mm -hmm. you know, flat grind, convex, you know, different shapes, different steels. And one thing I do want to recommend, guys, is, you know, don't just pick up a knife and say, OK, this is a good knife. I'm going to take it because you know, you really want to check if this is usable for you. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's one of the reasons why I think we both have a lot of different knives. It is. That's right. Because right? it gives us a lot of options. And almost like with holsters, you know, you, you try different knives, you try different holsters and you find something that really works and works well for you and fits you well. And, you know, the, the karambit there, I, I love, love karambits. They're such a good defensive knife. But the majority of your karambits are a absolute nightmare to sharpen. <laughs> uh, you know that's a that's a little different design with more of a more of a drop point style blade, where most of them have the curved blades. The curved blade is a difficult blade to sharpen. Yes, yes, it is. So a, a good knife, and the thing is, guys, is knives have been the preferred tool for human, you know, for humanity since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, and so people have been carrying knives for a long time, at least since the bronze age. Yeah. And probably even during copper and <laughs> well, you get back yeah. to the stone age yeah. I and mean, they're still making knives out of stone. Right. And flint. You're yeah. right. So, you know, it is a vital tool. Now, one thing is if you're not carrying a knife, a lot of times you just kind of get by with doing whatever and you just rip the box. In. But when you start to carry a knife, you find that it is a very, very useful tool. When what's the uh, what's the stone that even the sharpest knives of the world are still made out of today? It's a, a stone that they actually chip them off. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't even totally know drawn. It, but I know what you're talking about. Yep. <laughs> don't bring up things we can't even I answer. Know. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to look that up because it's gonna drive me crazy sitting here. If I okay, don't. so you know size is important. Uh, size matters. <laughs> That's what she said. But you know the thing is <laughs> is. Um, you know, there are different. Obsidian? Yes, obsidian. Uh, obsidian. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, man. Look at... that was, uh, Brandon Taylor. Thank you, Brandon, Brandon Taylor. <laughs> awesome. Great job, bud. Coming okay. In, coming in clutch for me. So knives. I mean, that's a pretty basic tool. It should be something that you carry all the time. And I'm going to tell you this one story before we go to our next. I have a buddy of mine that's uh, he's in law enforcement now. But when he was a young kid, uh, his cousins tied him up in a tree. Uh, they were playing around and they were bigger cousins and they tied him up. And they had him all up there and they left him, just left him, you know. And as he was sitting there trying to get out, he started slipping. And the next thing he knew, 
the, the what part of the uh, rope was around his neck mm -hmm. and he started choking and he had a pocket knife and he pulled it out and he cut himself free. And he told me then, he says, I will never be without a knife in my pocket. Guys, there may be situations to where it could save your life or someone else's. Yep. So a good knife is vital. And, you know, honestly, one of the one of the most realistic scenarios that any of us could find ourselves in where we need a knife is actually inside a vehicle. You're in an automobile wreck or someone you know or you come across an automobile wreck and someone's entrapped in the vehicle because of the seatbelt. You can't get the seatbelt undone and they're stuck in there. That is probably the most realistic scenario that you could need a knife in an emergency situation would be to cut someone out of a vehicle and cut seatbelts. Well, I, that's one thing I do is I have uh, one of those type of emergency knives mm -hmm. with the glass breaker yep. and the seatbelt cutter yep. in all of uh, my family's cars. That's I right. put them in there because I think it's important. Okay, let's go to our next one. Uh, flashlights. Now, I, I'm going to tell you something. Now, I'm a huge flashlight guy. I love flashlights. Yep. I have a bazillion. I have different sizes. There's different reasons. But it's funny. For years, I didn't carry a flashlight. Yeah. And I had friends of mine that started carrying them, and I thought they were a little crazy. Well, you know, for, for <laughs> years, all you had were these dinky little flashlights that you could only see about three feet away. <laughs> and it was either that or, you know, the mag light that's like this big. You know, so there, there wasn't a, a truly applicable EDC flashlight for a long, long That's time. That's a good point. Yeah. And um, and when Maglite came out with their little mm -hmm. double A battery and triple A's, yep. uh, you know, I really liked it. It had the pocket clip. That's you right. Know? So it started leading into that. But still, I just didn't carry a flashlight. When I started carrying a flashlight every day, uh, and this is my, the, the, my one of my EDC lights. It's one of the Arc Felds. It's flat. It has UV to it. I also carry one of the laser versions, which I do have that one in my pocket. <laughs> um, and this has become my best. But yeah. I, once I started carrying flashlights every day, it's amazing how much I use it yeah. for different things. Not just at night. Sometimes I'm in my shop and I'm looking behind something and I'm like, or I have a box and open it up and I'm shining a light in it. My gun safe. Oh, yes. Well, you know, I tell you one of the most frequently used flashlights that I've that I've been using is Candle IQ and yep. here we go. The, one of these and this thing, the anodizing is just worn off of it. Oh, yeah. The and, warrior, the yep. little warrior mini. Yep. These are great lights. And this one, you know, it's it's a little bigger light, but it actually fits my hand. Right. Right. Well, you know, a lot of you guys don't know, but my wife and I, we started hiking a lot this year. And uh, so we hike different waterfalls and we've been doing some caving and stuff. And every time we come across a new cave, I've got my flashlight. in my oh, pocket. That's a good point. And, you know, we, we hiked two different caves this past Friday. And uh, had my light in my pocket and we were able to, to go into the caves and actually be able to see around because I had a light with me. But, you know, if I wouldn't have had my light 10 or 15 feet and that's it, you know, you you're it's dark at that point. Right. So it's been really nice having a light just to, you know, at this time of year to make sure there's not bees nest or, you know, animals. Bears. Right. <laughs> right. So it's nice to have a light when you're when you're out like that to be able to to see what you're what's in front of you. Right. Well, now, a lot of times, though, people are now using their phones mm -hmm. as their light. And let me just say this little point. Um, you're, you're running your battery down. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, it's not really that great of a light. It can be used. I've used it myself a number of times. Sure. It's about but, as effective as the old double A mag light. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they but really you know, are. There are so many different pin lights. There are small little lights you can put in your pocket. And then you get into a more capable light. And like mm -hmm. Robbie was showing a second ago, this is a great self-defense option. That's it's right. a non-lethal option. But you can take this and use this crown or this bezel, and you can use it as a, a defensive tool. And lights are one of the most used defensive tools out there. And then you can step it up and get something that's longer, that's bigger, that's more of a baton where mm -hmm. you can pop somebody with it. Uh, and then still use it for light. A lot of times, law enforcement, especially the old big mag lights. Oh yes, they use those big double those D's, the D the D's cells. and the C cells. That's right. And they could use those as a baton. Uh, and then you have your more bright lights that really get a lot of light out there. If you need to search, or if you need to do, or even for security. I mean, this is a great light. Um, this is a Marauder Mini. Uh, it's just. <laughs> Freaking incredible 7,000 lumens. Or if you're lost in the woods, I mean, that's a signal light. 
You know, yeah. You can pop that one up in the air and that that's a signal light at night. Well, and you put this on low and it'll go forever. And that's one thing too. A lot of yep. these lights have capability <clears throat> where they'll go to those low lumens that's and they'll right. go for days, mm -hmm. weeks, weeks at a time. And so it gives you a good option. If you're, if you're like Robbie said, you could be stuck somewhere, you could be stranded. Well, you know, I think that's one of the biggest features that, that you see with the majority of your EDC lights now is the ability to be able to use different brightness settings on it uh, from a really dim for like map reading up to, a, you know, the thousand plus lumens that most of them have or a strobe feature for self-defense. Right. Those are those are very, very capable features that all of these lights are or the majority of your lights are coming with now that allow you to extend your battery life if you're in a situation where you don't have the ability to be able to charge your light but have the brightness if you do need it. Right, right. And some of these lights actually have ports where you can charge your phone and do things like that. Mm -hmm. So having light, light is your number one security tool. And so having a good light is very important. Um, and to, I know I've got a lot of O-lights out here because I do a lot with O-light, but um, one thing about it, you get 10% off using Suit00 at the O-light store if you want to, if you happen to be looking for a good flashlight. They are we torture test these lights all the time. They're yep. great lights. So you've got EDC, which is in your pocket. You've got a security light. Like if I'm going downtown or somewhere where I think, you know, and it's at night, I may throw on, I may change out my light and put something a little more aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, and then around the house, I want something bigger, brighter lumens. And then last but not least, and probably if I only had one light, it would be a headlamp. Yeah. Uh, and so having some kind of headlamp is hands free. It's easy to get to things. We were under the house the other week and we were putting in an Ethernet cable, my son and I, and we both had our headlamps and we were able to use it. It's a lot better than putting that light in your mouth. <laughs> so uh, a good headlamp. And this is always keep headlamps in my go bags. So make sure you, you know, I would highly recommend a good headlamp for that. OK, we're going to go to the next one and then we're going to stop, and take a little break for some questions. So I want to give Sarah Mac a heads up. Next are really a lighter. I mean, fire is elemental. Fire is something that yep. man has been using <clears throat> since the beginning. It cooks your food. It'll boil your water. It gives you light, gives you warmth. It, get, it builds your morale. It can keep predators at bay. Uh, and so having light or fire and a way to create fire is just elemental. You got to have it. You got to have it. Uh, but let me just say this. This is my choice for the most convenient way to start a fire. Man, that's just easy. And uh, we do that. But this is the big problem. And Robbie laughed about it. He said, you check it to make sure it works. Because <laughs> this little wheel right here, it can get a little corroded. And it's like, ah, 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 or your fuel runs out. Maybe this got depressed in your pack. The fuel comes out. And then all you have is a striker. Well, you can use a striker. You can use the striker on your lighter if you have some tinder. Well, I'll tell you a little pro tip. If you get one of those that the wheel's corroded on it and it won't strike, you, it doesn't matter how hard you push on it, you can't get it to move. Put it on your pants, push down, and push it really hard across your pants. Blue jeans or khakis, anything that's got an aggressive surface on it, that's dry. Don't do it on something that's wet, but something that's dry like your pants. Push it across your pants. It'll break the wheel loose, free the wheel, and you'll be able to use it. Now, that was worth Robbie being here, just that tip. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie. But one of my favorites is, you know, like a fire steel, a fair cerium rod. Uh, these, I mean, 10,000 strikes with this. And uh, it gives you a lot of capability over a long period of time. Because one of the things is, is that there are issues with Bic lighter. So if you're going to carry some kind of lighter, grab a Bic lighter. But yeah. put something else just to give you a little backup in the area. Again, you don't have to necessarily carry it on your person. Well, and I tell you, if you've, if any of y'all have watched that, that TV show alone, you get to see these tools used in a real life situation and the people that understand them, understand how they work are able to start a fire really easily. The people that don't, or that don't bring them and decide to use alternative methods for starting a fire, like a bow and a drill, <laughs> a, lot Ooh, that's those, a, lot of work. a lot of those people really, really struggle because it's so difficult to start a fire without the proper tools. And these Phariseum rods are something that the majority of the people on that show use, and they use them well. They understand how they work, and they're able to start a fire very easily with those tools, uh, especially compared to some of the other stuff that guys bring. Right. And girls. And they just, and too, like a lot of these, you can get refills. Yep. 
Uh, they do have some cheap ones. You can get some very inexpensive ferrocerium rods. Some of them are softer than others. Mm -hmm. One of the things I like about the Exotac, it has some strength to it. Yep. So you're not just wearing off your, uh, your rod. Uh, also, uh, we have these matches. Now, matches are great. I love lifeboat matches. Uh, they have a, a coating around the bottom, and you can actually take this, light it, and put it in water and mm -hmm. pull it out, and it'll catch back on fire. Yep. Um, these are excellent. I mean, I have a lot of different type matches. You can get Strike Anywhere matches. Uh, they, they do have waterproof matches, but the lifeboat matches to me are the deal. Uh, and honestly, I found found them at Home Depot. Wow. It was over <clears> at the <throat> um, where you get the where the grills and everything mm -hmm. are. And they had these lifeboat matches and they were in this case. I bought the whole freaking case because <laughs> something, you know, you order them and, and they're yeah. not cheap, but yeah. I actually they got, I got a really good deal on them. Uh, so you might want to check that uh, or even maybe even Walmart. If you shop at Walmart, I right. don't. And you know, <laughs> something that we don't have on the table today that, that I'm a big fan of are the strike anywhere matches Yeah, that have a little white tips on them. You can strike them on a pair of pants. You can strike them on your zipper. You can even pop them off your tooth and light them. Uh, but any kind of hard edge, you can strike it. So you don't have to have a strike board to be able to get those matches to light. They're a wood stem match, and you can generally get them in boxes of 500 or boxes of 1,000. That's a great one to have around. Keep it stored in some waterproof containers, and then you've got an easy-to-strike match. They're making it harder, though, to get those. They have been. Yeah, yep. they're kind of regulating that a little bit. Um, also, uh, magnesium bars. I mean, this is the old tried and true. It is, and, like the Boy Scout ones. Yeah, yep. and it's got a striker, and it's got a... Uh, ferro type rod on it and mm -hmm. you can use this magnesium to really get a hot fire yeah it almost looks like a, it's a piece of uh cut off uh blade yeah from a <laughs> from a hacksaw it's just a yeah. piece of hacksaw blade. yeah the, the striker is yep. yeah now with all that being said and two there's you know there's butane lighters i mm -hmm. mean there's there's the the jet type torch lighters yep. i really like those uh you know it gives you a really hot flame and it makes that cool noise yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, those are great. I mean, there's a lot of options. Now, one thing, though, that you don't want to forget is mm. some kind of tender. That's right. Now, you can make your tender. You can make a little bird's nest. You can get things really s scraped down. If you have a knife, you can really. But having a tender, it has an accelerant in it. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. military uses tender tabs. And you can break them up in a little bit. And then you can take this little striker. And I don't know where I put it now. Uh, it's just, oh, this <laughs> little, um, it's a nano spark. And it just pops that little spark. That's all you need. And it makes these really cool rings. Yeah. Um, that's all you need <laughs> to be able to light this tinder. You and said so, that jokingly. I was over there playing with that before the show started making little smoke rings with it. And I was like, that's so cool. <laughs> we could do that or a pipe. <laughs> or a cigar. Uh, and then we have the Air Force Blast Match. And this pops out. You can use it one-handedly. This is really an option that I love. And uh, it's got the ferro rod here. And as you hold it down... It creates fire. So you can just take and push it down. So if you're injured, one of your hands is injured, mm -hmm. uh, the blast match is excellent. Uh, so that's definitely, it's the Air Force blast match. But a lot of fire options. What I like to do, and I've shown this a bazillion times, is I like to have a small little tool roll and have my fire kit built in. And I'll tell you, I've been the hero at more bonfires and barbecues <laughs> than anybody because I always have this little fire kit in my car and somebody can't get it started. When they start to pull out the gasoline, I go, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me fix this for you. I've got it. And, and you know, and do that. But being able to create, create fire, again, is elemental. It's, mm -hmm. some, it's a basic survival skill. And you really, you should be able to not only have the tools, but to master the tools. That's get right. out and build you a small fire. Okay, let's go to a few questions. And uh, then we'll get back on the list. Uh, Mike Franciscus asks, how about a Rambo knife? Let me tell you something about Rambo knives. And that just brought me into what I say in every live is in for foul, the modern survival day for the coming economic collapse is the, <laughs> I love, I love how this comes up. This is such a great book guys. If you've never just put for foul in Google, it'll come up, but he actually documented what happened in Argentina when they had their total financial collapse and it went into SHTF down there. It was a disaster. Mm -hmm. He was laughing because everybody goes and buys all these really expensive knives. He had an old Rambo knife that he had as a kid, and he went through the whole thing with that. And he yep. used it like crazy. So don't discount a blade. Yeah, It may not be the top quality. If Now, you get a top quality blade, it's going to perform better. 
But man, if you can use it, yes. The old Rambo knives, and then they've got the little survival kit in the back. That's right. I mean, hey, they still work. They work as well today as they did 30 years ago. Right. You know? You're, yeah, the one thing you have to be careful, the blade will come loose from the from the handle right. because it's just got a bolt, a little nut in there holding it in place. So you have to be careful of that if you're batoning with it, that you're just hitting the blade and not the handle. So you're not putting shock on the, uh, on the handle and loosening the nut or breaking the nut on it. The blades are absolutely atrocious to try and sharpen. You know, it's almost <laughs> almost impossible to get a really nice edge on one. And even if you do, the steel's soft and it won't hold an edge. But hey, it is a it is a tried and proven tool. It's yeah, a there, tool. There's people that have used it in survival situations and came out the other side, and uh, it, it works. It does work. Uh, user five seven nine says, "Could you do a new SHTF book list slash library?" Yes, because that's a vital part. Listen, guys, to you, you know, we rely on eBooks and um, books on t CD or, or whatever, you know, digital books. Yep. <laughs> I'm still in the CD. You know, you know, that's one that I've got an Amazon store. If you just search Robbie Wheaton, I've got a huge list of books like that that you and I have talked about that we both read over time. I've got a huge list of those books on my Amazon store. Okay, good. Well, check out Robbie's Amazon store. I, yep. You know, I will do a, uh, I, I have, I'm an avid reader. I love to yep. read. Uh, and there are a bunch of really great books. And what I'm finding is, is books that were written back in the fifties and sixties on survival mm. are some of my favorites. Mm. They're so well written, but you know, going home series, uh, the survivor mm. series by James Wesley Rawl is phenomenal. Uh, Alas Babylon, phenomenal book. Uh, you know, the earth abides great book. And those are older books. There's a ton of great books. And yes, you should have a physical paper library mm -hmm. to make sure that you can uh, have Still that. access them. Uh, the SAS survival guide, you know, uh, again, for Fowl's book. I mean, there's, there's so many, uh, I did mention going home series. I think yep, you did. going home is phenomenal. Yeah, all so. the stuff on uh, nuclear survival. Yes. You know, tons of great books out there from the military, as well as the private sector on surviving nuclear attacks and EMPs. And I'm going to tell you one thing I do. I'll go and get a, uh, I'll put on Google, I'll say top 10 survival books mm -hmm. ever. Yep. And I'll see the list. And it's funny because there'll be different lists from yep. different people. And I'll buy them. I'll buy one, get it in, and then I read it. And then I've got some buddies and we, we trade them out. And uh, and I'm very particular about getting my books back. Though. I tell you, one thing that I've been doing a lot is if I'm searching for a particular book on a particular topic is I'll, I'll look at reviews on that book and, and not just the one stars and not just the five stars, but a lot of the three star reviews, because I think those are mo your most authentic Honest, reviews. Yeah. Yep. But I'll go through and read the reviews on the book and see what people are saying about it, about how how much detail the book goes into. Uh, and, and you know, if it, if they really cover what they say that they're covering in the book. And I found that a lot of times, if you look at the reviews on a book, you can really find out a lot about the meat and potatoes of the book before you buy it. One second after that's another great book, but, um, yes, I, I, I can uh, do an update yep. and give you guys some info. Okay. So I have two questions that are kind of very similar. Uh, John G ask, can you recommend a good knife sharpener that's easy to use? And then I also have 58 Mr. Mike asking, can you talk a little bit about knife sharpening techniques and recommend some good sharpeners? Well, let me just tell you, I, I have Lanskis. I yep. have a bunch of different type sharpeners. I have little small sharpeners just for field use. If mm -hmm. I just need to get a better edge and I have a leather strop that I also use. And it really makes a difference to use that strop and to, to fine tune that edge. But the, the knife sharp, Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's electronic, you know, I mean, it's, it's a machine and that is a great way to get a very precise cut or precise, uh, edge on your blade. So I really like that. Now, with that being said, I think it's important to have some manual ways to sharpen knives. Yep. And I think the Lansky, uh, there are, there's a lot of others. In fact, we were just at blade show and I, I didn't really look too much, but, uh, there are a lot of great, Sharpness, what have you? Yeah, yeah. The as far as for like individual use, I think the Lansky is probably one of the better ones out there. Uh, you set the angle on the blade and it keeps a very consistent, precise angle on the blade while you're sharpening. They've got a bunch of different stones, everything from your your rough cuts all the way down to your fine finishing stones. The Lansky is a great system. 
Um, on the commercial side, there's a lot of your uh, belt sanders that are out there that are designed for knife makers that are really good for, for, your, uh, for your initial edge and then also different polishing wheels, uh, buffer, buffing wheels for doing your final edge. The leather straps are a great, great tool. I think everybody should have a leather strop for knife blades. Uh, just for just for knocking the the little roll off of the edge, right, right. But the uh, and even like there's some uh, the little hand sharpeners. They've just got a, like a 45 degree carbide uh, scraper in there, and then a, a ceramic edge on the other side for knocking knocking the burr off. Is a great little field tool for putting an edge back on a blade uh, quickly and safely. Uh, so, you know, I use those, I've got one of those in the kitchen that if I'm, if I'm cooking in the kitchen and I need something that I can just put an edge on one really quickly, I can pull it through it three or four times, buff it off on the little, little stones on the other side and go right back to cutting with a really sharp blade. And they, they work exceptionally well for, for what they are. Um, but yeah, the, if I was looking for something for individual use, the Lansky would be my number one choice. But if you want something, uh, the, uh, the knife sharp, Mm -hmm. I believe it's the knife sharp. It's it's has an angle. It has a sander. It does. It's and, got the. It's got a belt on it, right? Right. Yep. And uh, of course, I got the Ken Onion version. You yep. know, which is really it's really nice. And there's a lot of different attachments that go to it. Um, but again, make sure you have a backup. Make sure yep. you have a non-power backup. And to me, the Lansky is is the best. Yep. Uh, marksmanship ask best torch. Like. Um, well, I'll tell you, it's like this little eagle. This is an eagle torch, and I got them on Amazon, and I got a case of them. And it's just a small little torch. Uh, but the problem is, even though it has fuel in it, it's not working. <laughs> and uh, and I wanted to bring that out to show that. One thing I do like about those is they're refillable, though. Yeah, but so it's got fuel in it. Yeah, it's it just doesn't have enough compressed air to be able to drive it. It's probably been sitting. But, mm -hmm. you know... There are, I'm not a, I'm not well versed in yep. a lot of the torches because a lot of times like this one, I found that at a <laughs> gas station. Uh, and I did some research on some a while back. And when I got them in, I think it's the ACAR or there's, there's a couple of really fancy ones and, and they didn't, they didn't work well. Um, so I, I'm not, I've not been, I've got a buddy of mine that's all into them. He's got a whole ton of them and I, and I wish I would have been paying more attention. Uh, but really uh, for my, my experience with torches have been pretty limited to, Oh, I like that. It's in a gas station yeah. or something and I pick it up. So sorry, I can't really give you a great answer on that, but I think it was the, uh, it was really highly recommended. It starts with an A, I think it's an Ak bar or something like that. And it was really fancy and it was fairly expensive. And so I ordered about three of them and I just have been very disappointed in them. Uh, some people though, the raves, the reviews were good on them. So not sure what happened. One more and then we're getting back uh, to the list. Brandon Taylor asked, what do y'all think of Elkridge fixed blade skinners? Uh, Elkridge makes some good knives. Um, in fact, they were at the, they were at blade show. Um, they make good, good quality knives, good quality yeah. steel. Yeah, I mean that's that's really all you can say about them. They make good stuff. Yeah, I so. mean you know the thing is is and that's one thing about a good quality company that's making using good steels and uh, you, it's going to last longer. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to sharpen because the steel, but it gives you it has better edge retention. It's always give or take. It is. Know? That's one of the things you know you can you can get a really really hard durable steel that is difficult to sharpen but holds an edge for a long time. You can get a little softer steel that's easier to sharpen, but doesn't hold an edge quite as well. Uh, or you can get some of the layered steels that are, have a really hard outside and then a softer inside that are easy to sharpen and hold an edge really well. So but you lots know, of different steel options out yeah, there. There, there are, and, and there's a lot of different pros and cons. Yep. Uh, one thing that I, I haven't done lately because I, I don't, I think he stopped doing it, but I had a guy that actually sharpened knives that I knew and um, I would take a bunch of knives over and he'd sharpen them up. I know uh, nothing fancy used to do that a lot. <clears throat> yep. He would take his knives and just be, instead of going through 20 or 30 knives, he'd just take them over there and get a really good edge on them. Well, you know, that's that maybe something you want to find. If you're, if you carry one or two knives, the Lansky kit works great for you because you're only sharpening one or two. And it, it's time consuming to sit down on a manual stone and sharpen and sharpen a knife, even just one. If you've got a lot of knives, you carry a lot of different knives, Something that is 
a belt driven style knife and, you know, some polishing wheels is going to be much, much more effective for you to be able to sharpen a lot of knives quickly. Right. You just got to have the touch. Yep. Okay. Let's go on and we'll come back to some questions uh, in just a few minutes. Okay. So next on the list, this is number four is multi-tools. Uh, and there's a bazillion different types. Yep. Uh, one thing I, I really want to point out, obviously, is that, you know, you have a big multiplier like this SOG. Uh, and then you get this small little Leatherman uh, and, you know, the little juice or whatever, or squirt. And, you know, one's more capable than the other. Yeah, well, and they're, they're kind of job specific. Right. You know, there There's tasks that the small one will do just fine. But there's tasks that you need a bigger multi-tool for. Yeah, but it's so, just heavier. It's it is. bigger. It's, you know. Yep. So, uh, and this is funny because, you know, a lot of guys have asked me, what do you, what multi-tool do you EDC? I don't. Yeah. Now, why? Because I just don't find myself needing a multi-tool for what I do uh, on a regular basis that I can't have one just handy. That I, and I do like to keep them handy. I keep them in my bags. I keep one in my car. Uh, yeah, the, the biggest place that I've ever found a really good use for multi-tools is your range bag. Mm, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> for yeah with, sure. Especially with, you know, the different little drivers. It uses your the Torx bits for your drivers. These are things that in your range bag, you always need a different tool in your range bag for you know, scope adjustments or for moving a scope, moving sights. But a that, little all to pick out something. Yeah, you, you know. get a stuck case in a chamber or something. Those are areas where I've always found that multi-tools really shine. Right. Because they generally you'll find the tool that you need on that multi-tool to be able to complete whatever task you have at hand at the range. And uh, you know, that's the one area where... Yeah, if you don't have it, you're gonna be like, oh man, I needed this or I needed this. And you know, it's nine times out of ten, it's on the multi-tool and right. you'll be able to use it. Right. And you know, and two guys, some of you guys, you use your multi-tool all the time. Right. Because that's your job, it's what you do, it's the situation you're in. So, you know, it's just one of those things you have to decide. For me, I carry so much by the time I have my light, my flashlight, my gun, my, you know, my wallet, my phone. Um, you know, I I have to limit it. I go, okay, you know, what am I not using that often? But what are you using that often? Mm -hmm. And uh, a multi-tool for some guys, you're using it every, every you're day. using it work, you're yep. using it for everything. And it makes a great substitute for a toolbox. Mm -hmm. It's not as good as a toolbox, but it definitely will get you ahead. Uh, but, you know, some of them have clips, some of them have pouches. There's a lot of different things, but a multi-tool, um, you know, especially and Robbie, you know, that was a good point about the drivers. You know, we're getting less and less seeing Phillips head scr screws. Right. And uh, and so and there are a lot of driver type multi tools out there. This is one actually that I'm kind of working on a review um, and it's the Roxon. And, uh, you know, it's just this great. I mean, I love the multi tool itself. It's really good. It's got a lot of features to it. And but one thing I love is it has a bit driver set that comes with it and I can put this in this tool and use it. And again, Phillips head are getting harder to they're, they're just not as many <laughs> flathead screwdrivers are getting way, way, yep. you know, the uh, less. And so and these are more secure, more capable. So you might want to kind of up your game a little bit to a bit driver type tool. That's right. That at least has access to it. Well, and I tell you one thing with multi tools and I have I went through a ton of them over the years, you know, just trying them, experimenting with them, see what works, see what doesn't with, with your multi-tool, get a good one. You know, the one thing that you'll find with it is these hinge points here and here are also the failure points on right. a multi-tool. If you get a cheaper one and you're trying to use it to cut wire or use the pliers on it, you can actually break these little pins right here or bend the flanges around it and they don't work anymore. That's the one area that I found where where these tools have a huge weakness, uh, especially with the cheaper tools. Right. So spend the money. If you're going to buy one, spend the money and buy a good one. Only buy once. Right. Right. Um, buy I'm, once, buy, cry once. That's right. Buy once, cry once. I'm a huge believer in that. Don't when it comes to your blades, you know, there, there's a ton of cheap stuff out there. Don't cheap out on your multi-tool. No. It will bite you in the butt every single time. Spend yeah. your money on that. Get a good one right off the bat. But guys, there are so many different sizes, little yep. handy ones. I mean, you can, you know, slip these in your pocket. You don't even know they're there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, there's just so many options. And Leatherman, you know, is tried and true. They SOG. Are. 
or SOG and, you know, Gerber makes some good knives. I mean, good multi-tools. Yep. So uh, just a lot of different options. And like Robbie said, it's funny because you go into Walmart and they'll have one of those multi-tools and it's three bucks. Oh, yeah. Hanging, <laughs> at, hanging at the checkout line. And you're like, the impulse buy. Yeah. And you take it home and you put the screw in, and the screwdriver in, it goes ramp and <laughs> bends. Now, I'll say this. A, a lot of the Chinese tools, and a lot of these, even though they're American names, mm -hmm. are made still in China a lot of times. And, um, you know, they are really coming along on improving their steels and their heat treating processes uh, and coming in really at a cheaper price. Yeah. There are, a lot of them now are, you know, made from recycled car fenders and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually good steel. Okay, multi-tools. All right, now next is, this is something that honestly I've really come up on in the past few months. I'm a big watch guy. I love watches. I have a ton of them. Um, I just I just like wearing different watches. I get a lot of questions for people going, what is that watch? And yep. I'm thinking, I don't even remember what that <laughs> what video that was. Uh, this is, and, th and this is the point. Uh, this is an automatic winding watch. Uh, it's one of the self-winders. And it's funny because I've been carrying digital watches or, you know, even wind up watches or just whatever. Well, wind up watches actually would be a, a, a not a bad substitute as well. But well, and, you know, a lot of people power. don't even know what an automatic watch is. A, uh, a automatic watch is it has a winding mechanism inside the watch. So as you move, you move your wrist, you move your arm, you're doing whatever in your daily activities. Just that movement swings a little bearing in there that keeps that watch wound constantly. This one has a, a little uh, clear glass on the back and you can see it mm -hmm. winding. Yep. Um, and I mean, these are really, these are really excellent watches. Uh, this is the Invicta and they're not cheap, but you know, the thing is, is finding a good automatic watch yep. because if there is an EMP or if, in which the batteries last pretty good, like the G-Shocks and some of those, I really like those. I, I like them. You know, I'm, I'm the exact opposite. Uh, battery powered watches, I get a month or two out of it and it kills the battery. I can replace it, put a new battery in it and it kills the battery. Battery powered watches don't last very long with me. Yeah. It's never probably some of your alkaline or yeah, whatever. Right. Your never, and they never have. And a lot of people are like that where they can, they can buy a really nice battery operated watch and it just dies. You know, they're yeah. like, Hey, I'm four months in and my battery just died. Maybe I got a crappy battery. They put a new battery in and it does the same thing. But, you know, the, the auto winding watches, they, they can be a little more expensive or even the wind up watches. But, you know, and of course, you know, we have our cell phones and we, we can check our time. And for a long time, I just quit wearing watches. Mm -hmm. Once I started back wearing watches, I check my time. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm not having to reach back here, pull it out, hit it. You know, I can just I can just glance at it and, and I can tell time. And one of the things about a watch is you can actually use this for directional. Uh, and we did a video about it, how to tell direction from your watch by lining it up with the sun. Mm -hmm. And so it can be used as a compass. Uh, it can be used to um, to coordinate with between people. Uh, you know, you can say, hey, we're going to be doing this. And you do have a timepiece. Uh, one of the things in um, in this one book that I read, um, Earth Abides, is that the watches all died and uh, they ended up building a sundial because they wanted to make sure that they could tell the time. And so it was, it's just watches and time is, is important. Yep. Uh, so a good automatic watch, if you can find one, typically they're a little more expensive than your standard uh, quartz watches. But to me, it's something that I've really kind of gotten to, into. Okay. Uh, bandanas, uh, you know, bandanas, there's just so many uses. Um, you know, if I'm hot, we got summertime coming up, you know, that, put it around your neck, put it over your head, put it in front of your face as a mask to keep dust and debris out or yep. to rob a bank or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't going to work anymore. They've got the facial recognition down to where it goes around those masks. That's um, funny. But you can use this as a hobo sack. You can lay it out on the ground and put items on it to keep it from getting dirty. Uh, you know, you can use it to, to help if you're trying to like take a wrench. You need some something to help you kind of grab hold of it. Yep. I mean, these, even even down to sediment filtration with water. Right. You know, there, there's just a million and one uses for a bandana. Yeah. And the good thing is they're small. They're lightweight. They're easy to stuff in a backpack or even your back pocket and carry. Right. So, yeah, I think everybody should have at least a couple in their pack. All right. Blow your nose. Yep. You know, you can wipe <laughs> off your face. water after that. <laughs> At least, at least not somebody <laughs> else's water. <laughs> but bandanas, I mean, huge, huge. And again, like Robbie said, and so I just like to keep these around. 
Uh, one thing, though, that I do a lot is if I go into a restaurant and I get a few napkins, you know, and then I finish, I don't want to throw those napkins away. So I take them and I put them in my car. And after a while, they get piled. I almost got these napkins everywhere. <laughs> but, you know, the napkins can serve a lot of purposes as well. But uh, I really like to have a good bandana and, and it goes in all my packs. You know, one thing that I do with my bandanas when I get them is as soon as I get them, they go in the washing machine and I wash them because they're the fibers and fabric are really stiff on them. Right. Right, right from the when you first buy them. So I always wash them and launder them first and then throw them in the dryer and it, it softens them up and it makes them much more pliable and usable. Right. Like this one. Yep. This one, the reason why it's so pliable is because I had I wore it a lot during the summertime. Yeah. It is sweaty. <laughs> Doesn't smell bad though. <laughs> uh, but yeah, bandanas, great use, multi-use, great stuff. Okay, we're gonna go to number seven. Then we're gonna stop for a couple of minutes, and I'm just giving Sarah Mac a heads up. We'll take a few more questions. Uh, we do have paracord, paracord. Yes. Um, just keep this somewhere. You don't want to EDC this in your pocket, but. Uh, this is the spool tool. It's something I've been using for years to keep it from. Now, this one has something on it, but I've got a hank of paracord down there. That's just a big rat's nest. And, you know, that's one of the things I've, I've talked about in the past with paracord. You know, you can buy the big rolls of like a thousand foot of paracord. And it's it's awesome to have a thousand feet of paracord because you're like, I will never run out. You will trust me. <laughs> but <laughs> one thing with that thousand foot roll, the spools they use are just they're junk. And the spool ends up breaking, and then you end up with a huge bird nest of paracord. So having something like this to where you can, when you get a thousand foot roll, you can dole it out into a hundred foot rolls or fifty foot rolls and keep it where it doesn't become unspooled and just a, a nasty mess. It's you need to have these around for sure. And you know, there are other options. You take a yep. dowel rod and wrap yep. it around. You know, I've done a lot of different things, but there's so many uses for paracord you know, repairing things, uh, even putting together lanyards or little pulls, you know, when it comes to your gear, tying on gear. That's right. Uh, taking a tarp, tying this up and making a, a shelter, shelter with it. Yep. Uh, you know, there are just so many different options with paracord. And it's one of those things that you really should have somewhere. Now, I did have some bank line and I left it. But bank line uh, is also, whether it's waxed or unwaxed, uh, you know, you can use bank line. And, and you know, the, strong and thin. one of the things with paracord that I found is because you can buy it in such big rolls and it is relatively inexpensive compared to a lot of your ropes and straps. I use paracord almost as a dis disposable item. If I need to tie something down, I don't mind cutting 10 or 12 feet off of it and using it to tie stuff down and throwing it away when I'm done with it. Right. It's it's a great disposable tool. Uh, to having your kit that you can use. And then if you don't need it, that, sm that small section anymore, you just toss it. And then right. you've still got, you know, you, you know that you've still got plenty on hand and you're not going to run out. That's a good point. You know, one thing that I do when I'm doing flashlight reviews, especially when we're doing the test and torture test, I have a length of paracord that I tie to the flashlight and I keep it handy where I know where it is every time I do it. So I <laughs> Just, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, paracord is something again. Yeah, you're right. It's something that's disposable. Yep. And because it comes in such big rolls. Good point. Okay, let's go to a few questions and then we've got three more to finish up with. Uh, doggone ask, recommend a way that women can carry a gun when it's 100 degrees with 90% humidity in Florida under or over a simple sundress without it causing you to sweat more and be uncomfortable. <laughs> I'll leave that one to you, Don. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> listen, I, I know uh, for women to conceal carry is a huge yeah. challenge compared to men. It's much easier for a man to conceal carry. Um, now, as far as a sundress and, you know, this is, I'm going to tell you what my wife did. Now she used to carry in her, in her pocketbook uh, and it's heavy. It gets heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, what she did was, and we got it at NRA, and I, and I don't, the brand's not on it, but it's this, it's a belly band, but it's really soft, mm -hmm. soft material. And she puts it around, and then she, when she wears something, it just, the way it does, and she can wear regular clothes. Yeah. And she can even tuck <laughs> it down into her, her pants. Um, you know, obviously a sundress, I can't address that particularly because I'm not used to wearing those. That's but, why I defer to you. Yeah, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's finding something that, you know, that you feel comfortable with. Some of those belly bands are rigid and they're yeah. Kodura and they're tough. This is a very soft, really nice material. Yeah, uh, almost almost like an elastic cotton. Yeah, yeah. just very, yeah. very pleasant to put on. And, and that would be that would be my recommendation as well. Just a, a, not not the really wide 
almost yeah, like this a, is actually almost like a fairly thin. Yep. The thinner, the thinner uh, elastic cotton belly bands are really the the thing to wear in the summertime. But, especially especially for a woman trying to conceal, that would be my my first recommendation. Yeah. But, you know, the thing is, is, you know, when you're wearing a sundress like that, I mean, you know, it's it's it fitted. Yeah. So, you know, you move and then it's printing. And two, the belly band in the in Florida in the summertime could be could be kind of warm. It could get you warm around this area. Right. Um, and even even drawing is still a consideration. You know, it's difficult with a sundress. <laughs> on, <woo! right? laughs> It's it's difficult to be able to get to your firearm, you know, yeah. and that that's definitely something something to consider as well. Yeah, maybe just keep. I mean, and obviously, off body <clears throat> carry to me is not optimal, but yeah. you know, maybe in a small purse, a small a small handgun. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of fanny packs. You know, they're they went out of out of favor with people for years and years, but a fanny pack is still a great great way to carry a firearm on your person and it still be concealed and easily accessible. Yeah. I carry a fanny pack when I go to the dojo and we train for karate uh, in that way I've got it and I can set it in my, where my place is and yep. then I, it's accessible or if I'm going to the gym or if I'm going to the beach, mm -hmm. that's one place I really started carrying a fanny pack. Yep. And then I just put it down there. The family knows this is it. This is where it is. And uh, you know, we just keep it, you know, kind of concealed. And, uh, but well, I tell you, I carry, when when I go hiking, the fanny pack is what I carry my pistol in because I don't want it. I love carrying a pistol on a belt, right? But when you're hiking, you know, you hike ten or fifteen miles, a pistol hanging on your belt, it gets heavy. Yeah. I don't I don't care what kind of pistol it is, it gets heavy. So to be able to put it in that fanny pack and distribute that weight all the way around my waist, where I'm not having that weight, you know, targeted in one specific place on my belt. It makes carrying it all day a lot easier. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like we probably hadn't answered your question because it is a that is a tough one. Uh, there are some female uh, specific companies out there that do cater to you know while you dress yep. the way you dress. And, and, hey, and some and of the females researching. that are watching this show, please, you know, if y'all have recommendations for, make sure that you comment in the in the comments below. Okay. Uh, Command Center ten eight ask what handgun do y'all carry out camping? Uh, 10 millimeter, typically Glock 20. Yeah. Um, uh, a 10 millimeter, um, you know, I was just in Smoky mountains and had a bear encounter, uh, 10 millimeter. <laughs> uh, and you know, it's one of those things you can use for self-defense, mm -hmm. but, um, I carry the Glock 29, which is the more compact version. Uh, but when we're hunting, I carry the 20. Yep. Um, and there's, there are other 10 millimeter options. Smith and Wesson makes one that's really good. And then, uh, Springfield Armory, uh, and then you got your 1911 10 millimeters that are excellent as well. But uh, I like the the thing I like about 10 millimeter is that it's like a 357 Magnum, but I have like 13 or 15 rounds right, uh, <clears throat> right there, and that is a big comfort instead of a revolver with six rounds. Yeah. Uh, but six rounds, you know, if I was going camping and I had a 357 Magnum or a 44 Magnum, I would feel comfortable with that. It's better than a rock. Yeah. Uh, Harper Faulkner asks, when it all falls apart, why will you need a watch? Society. Right. Well, time goes beyond just society. Time is something that, um, you know, gives you a, a sense of, of time. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's just you're just there and the, you're watching the sun. And here's the thing, whether you have a timepiece or not, you will you will pay attention to time. Yep. And because you'll you'll be working and you'll think, oh, I've got this much time before it gets dark or, you know, the sun's starting to go down. I mean, you know, it's but here's the thing. Well, this even is just, even seasonal stuff. You know, most of your watches, even even your your wind up watches and your automatic watches, they have the, the date on it. And just knowing your date and being able to keep up with the date for your seasons to know that, you know, hey, we're getting close to fall. We're getting close to harvest time. We're getting close to winter. Spring's coming. It's time to plant. You know, those are those are really big things that that we need to keep an eye on for planting season, for harvesting season. But honestly, if the world's coming to an end, I'm probably not going to be wearing a watch. Maybe, maybe not. The, the, the fact is, is really this is more toward just things you should carry at this present time. Uh, and then you get yourself in a situation or something happens or an initially initially. And two, if someone else has a watch, you can kind of coordinate you know, some kind of whatever, you know, Hey, we both have watches. Let's rendezvous at this time here. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's not like super vital for, 
for the you know, zombie apocalypse, but it's definitely something that is usable. <clears throat> and again, you can find direction with it. So, yeah, you know, I, I understand the question, but okay. Let's go ahead and finish up because we've got three more to finish and, and they're not too bad. Uh, pens. Uh, one thing that I like is a space pen. Uh, one of the, uh, the space pens and I like to have a little paper, some way to write something down. Uh, and so, and I like the uh, write in the rain pads or you can get the little field note pads, uh, but not just to write things down. Also a tactical pen for a self-defense option. And so I've got something that I can use uh, and I can still write it down. And so that way it gives me just a little bit of redundancy um, in, in two different tools. Mm -hmm. But what we have here is an O-pen. And so now I have a flashlight, a pen, and a tactical self-defense option. So there are things you may need to write down. Maybe it's a tag number. Maybe it's whatever. You need to get that down. Uh, maybe you just have a note. You go, oh, crap, I need to think about this. You know, Or maybe I'm just like, you know what? I need to little, write some stuff down. Uh, you know, I've got a journal and I need to write down, but having a pen and a lot of times, like if me, I get older, I, you know, I forget things. So <laughs> it's good to have a pen to be able to take notes. Well, and one thing to consider too, especially with a really nice pen is to make sure you have refills for that pen. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I love nice pens. I'm a big fan of nice pens, especially tactical defensive pens, but I love to have refills for my pens because I, I use them all the time. I'm writing stuff all the time. And I want to make sure that if I run out of ink, that I've got replacements for it. Right. That's a good point. Okay. Compass. Compass. I mean, you know, it gives you direction. And if for some reason you are lost or you need to find some way, if you're going east, you know what? I don't know where I am, but I know I need to go south. And let me figure out how to get there. And so having a compass, having navigational skills. Yep. Is also very important. Yeah. Not just having the tool, but having the skills to use that tool. Right. You know, that's a lot of us have compasses built in our cars, but you know, the the small compasses like this, most people don't know how to use them. Right. Right. You know, they they have no idea how how to use a compass, how to how to shoot an azimuth, how to get from one place to another with a compass. I'm telling you guys, that is a skill that you need to learn how to use. And I'll tell you, Corporal's Corner the YouTube channel. He does a fantastic job of going through basic compass reading and navigation. And plus he just has a great channel. I really like him, but um, check it, you know, check that out if you, and there's a lot of other resources yep. out there to learn uh, about compasses, but knowing the direction you're going in and that way you're also not going in a circle. Right. Okay. And then last but not least uh, pepper spray. Now pepper spray is one of those non-lethal options. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's something that can get you out of a bad situation. Uh, and then you have bear spray. And again, like I was saying earlier, you know, we had, I had this encounter with a bear. I did have bear spray and it really shoots out a big mist. With pepper spray, you want to go right for the eyes with somebody. But if you have a group of people and we've seen the civil unrest before, yep. people being pulled out of their cars, take some bear spray and just spray the heck out of them. And, you know, it's better for a group. This is much better than a firearm, especially in a mob encounter, yep. a civil unrest encounter. So <clears throat> and if you don't believe that, ask Kyle Rittenhouse. He went through all kind of crap. Well, you know, you look at you look at law enforcement, you know, if they're dispersing a crowd, what's the first thing they go to? CS. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it works. It works well for dispersing crowds. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with any of your your pepper sprays, whether it's a larger can like this, the little keychain size, or even your bear spray, uh, you can't fly with it. They None of this is allowed on an airplane, even in your checked bags. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. If you're going somewhere where you're going to need bear spray or you're going to need pepper spray, you're not going to be able to fly with it. You're going to have to buy it when you get there, and you're going to have to leave it behind or mail it to yourself uh, if you want to ship it back home. And you don't want to leave this in your car, in a hot car. Right. Right? You want to make sure you protect it, You know, maybe insulate it or whatever. Yep. Just don't leave it out to where because this can go off in your vehicle. Yep. And if you've ever had one pop inside your car, it'll only happen to you once. <laughs> just saying. And, get, and listen, guys, there's that cheap... Uh, grocery store mm -hmm. or, you know, convenience store, pepper spray, get some good pepper spray. The Sabre Red is really excellent. Uh, this is my choice. There are some others out there. I think Palm and some others, and we have some different ones. Well, and, you know, that's one of the things with the little keychain ones. You know, they look cute. A lot of women carry them on their keychains and stuff. That stuff squirts only about five or six feet. 
it's it's really someone would have to be on top of you for you to be able to hit them with that and and it to be effective uh, for you to and you don't have a very long blast with it either. You know, it burns out in just a few seconds. So a larger can, uh, which like the Saber Red like this is is a great one for you to use because it, it does have a larger capacity. It sprays further. Um, and it's easier to hold on to, you know, the little small ones, it's hard to get them open. It's hard to, you know, the little flip tops and then the switches and all of this in a stressful situation, you don't need all of that. You need to be able to throw your thumb on top of it, flip the lever and hit the button. So get a larger can, something and that works more. Kimber makes some really good ones too. Yep. The little prep, their little pep, pepper blaster. Mm -hmm. That's got two shots, but man, it is very accurate yep. and it's a cool little system. It looks almost like a little handgun. Yeah. So you've got some rudimentary sights on it where you can actually aim it. So, guys, that's uh, the top 10. Uh, obviously, there are others. There are some things that, you know, you again, in the comments, you want to leave some ideas because a lot of people go through the comments and it really helps for us to bring together a better community. Uh, but, you know, these items, again, not necessarily on your person, not necessarily for the end of the world. This is something on an everyday basis that just really makes your life better, but could come in handy as a life threatening situation. So we really appreciate Robbie Wheaton for being here today. Again, check out Wheaton Arms and uh, also Robbie Wheaton's YouTube channel. Uh, and we really appreciate him being here and hanging out with us. Also, Sarah Mack for monitoring the questions, asking the questions. And Exotac, 20% uh, off using Suits20 with a link down below. Guys, I've tried a whole ton of them. And the best out there is Exotac. Those guys know what they're doing, and they've got very innovative tools made right here in the USA. We really appreciate those guys. So we'll hopefully we'll see you next week. So be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.